Hey, so hopefully we are live. I just double checking that I've actually got my microphone on because I had a couple of little helpers in the office with me earlier. You might have seen if you follow me on Instagram at all, I posted a little picture um, of my littlest and my eldest uh, both helping me set up the tech for tonight's live. So I did have my microphone muted whilst we were testing things out in here and that suddenly made me think right I better get in and check that this is all working in the group. Um, I've got the comments and reactions all set up so I can see you here and I will check. Yes it looks like we're live so if you are here with me live then give me a little thumbs up. I'm not sure if I can actually see the thumbs up through here. Yes, I can. Hi, Julie. I've got a little hello from you. Uh, so I thought I would hop on first of all tonight and just say hello, give everyone a couple of minutes to join in. And I know that we have a bit of a delay, obviously, whilst we're broadcasting into the Facebook group. So I didn't want to just jump straight into tonight's content without giving everyone a chance to kind of settle in and get here. Hey, Catherine. I'm uh, using Ecamm, which um, I have to say, I'm new to using this, but how are you guys finding it? Are you enjoying um, being able to kind of interact along inside the Facebook group rather than being on a web uh, browser? It's really great to be able to catch the replays over on the web browser, I think, so I would definitely keep that. Uh, but I'm quite enjoying having the live interaction with you guys inside this group. It's nice to keep everything in one place. And while we're all here, why not just use this? space. So I'm glad, I hope you can all hear me okay. Should have just double checked that but according to my mic settings we're all good. And so rather than just chatting away with you guys as I could do all night, I will change my screen share. Hopefully this will work. I probably should have tested this properly first. Hopefully guys you will be able to see the presentation slides. Uh, Ecamm, is it like Zoom? Yes, uh, a bit like Zoom. Um, but actually a lot more features and available to it so that you can um, really do all sorts of fun stuff inside and it allows you to have your comments and reactions and everything inside you can do screen overlays you can do all sorts of fancy tech stuff uh, which I haven't got anywhere near doing yet but for now at least we know it's got the basics covered and you can do face to camera and you can share your slides uh, that's the things that I look for the most when it comes to these kind of broadcasting uh, tools it's always good to test these new ones out though. So I will move on over into the brand teardown because guys, that is what we are going to be talking about tonight. Uh, make sure I've got my sound effects and all of the system audios set up right because I just had a notification ping up, but hopefully it only pings for me and not you guys. So welcome back to the final episode. Can you believe we're at the final episode? For the brand together series and I know tonight was um, a little bit of a mystery I guess uh, for some of you and I wanted to keep this class a little bit of a mystery didn't want to spill all the beans about what we would be talking about tonight until we got here and to be honest I was updating these slides quite late last night as well because I just kept thinking of really great examples and things that I wanted to put in here with you and because this is kind of our final session together although I'm going to be around the whole of the rest of the week so that we can really connect and go into any of the questions that you might have from any of these sessions um tonight I wanted to jam as much really useful content in here as possible now I will stick around after the class so if you've got questions and I can't get to them whilst we're going through the kind of presentation keep putting them into the comments thread and when we get to the end I will come back and have a little look through and just poke me and remind me if uh, I haven't answered your question tonight um, and if not we can come back and answer the questions in the group a week. So welcome to the brand teardown and rebuild class. So what is a teardown? Well according to the dictionary or you know Google really because that's how we find most things out. Um, the definition of a teardown is an act of completely dismantling something and that's what we're going to do together tonight. We are going to dissect and dismantle your brand and rebuild it together. Well we're going to go through the exact steps that you need to take to really dissect your brand and start rebuilding it um, and we're going to use a real life example to go through together so you can see how all of those pieces come together and know exactly what you need to do in order to tear down and rebuild your own brand 
because if we were really to go into a full tear down and rebuild tonight then it would take us a little bit longer than just the hour that we've scheduled for this time uh, but showing you exact steps that you can take will just about hopefully take us own to just under our mark um, and without further ado I suppose let's get cracking. So tonight we're going to be covering how to know if you need to rebrand, where to start to get started on this teardown that we're talking about. And I'm going to go through the stages of branding so that you know what stage that you're in, what to look at um, when you go through the teardown process. And then we're going to talk about the easiest way for you to rebrand. Because once you've toned it down, you need to start rebranding. <laughs> so let's crack on. How to know if you need to rebrand. So your brand is not just your logo. And if there's hopefully anything that this series has left you with, uh, it's with the sound knowledge, I hope, that your brand is not just what your business looks like or how people see you. It's so much more than that. It's the way people really connect to your message. It's your kind of key to those premium prices and positioning. It's the key to really attracting a tribe of perfect customers and to having your products and your services really simply just fly off the shelf to the right people. So in short, if that's not happening for you right now, then you need to rebrand. Now, if you want to get your message kind of not just heard, but really understood, and if you want to create an impact with your work and to really get your products and services out there and into the hands of all the right people, if you want to create a movement or that legacy that you're thinking about or a real tribe of customers, if you really want to be seen for who you truly are, to really leave a lasting impression where people first discover you and to be top of mind in your audience, then a rebrand or your brand <laughs> can do all of that for you. Uh, if you're new to branding and you haven't actually started branding yet, uh, then you don't have to have a brand to uh, do this where I'm talking about rebranding. It's just most people will have got to this stage in their business and have either consciously or unconsciously <laughs> created a brand along the way. So most of us are already having already got a brand, whether you've consciously thought about what that looks like or whether you are only really just coming to realization of the power that your brand has. Because your brand can do all those things I just mentioned for you. And if it's not, if it's not already doing that, then it really is or it should be a time for you to look a little bit more deeply at the brand that you are currently sharing with the world. So even if you really just have an inkling uh, that your brand is not quite doing some or all of these things for you, then my question to you is, what are you waiting for? It's quite a loaded question, that one. And to help you kind of get there, let's go through uh, the signs that you may see when you need to rebrand. Because it can be quite hard to know if you are in need of a rebrand, especially if you are, you know, inside the frame. There's that saying, I love the saying, that you can't see the uh, frame when you're inside the picture can't remember exactly the words for it, I should have written that down to really say it properly. But I love that saying, because it can be really difficult to know that you need a rebrand when you're so close to your brand and when you're working in it every day. Because also, I mean, the red flags, some of these signs can get really lost in the hustle of that everyday work life that you've got. And even when you do notice these signs, the decision to actually start rebranding is rarely an easy one. So how do you know? when it's really time to do something about it. And I'm going to share with you a few glaring signs that your brand is in need of an update. So the first sign, if your brand name no longer reflects your brand vision, now it happens. What seems like a great name 10 years ago, five years ago, even just last year, can sometimes just no longer represent what your brand is. Is really about. Maybe it was a change in kind of cultural context uh, that really kind of changed the meaning of your brand name. Or sometimes it's the business just really outgrows the name of that brand that you created. Whatever the reason is, don't let your brand name 
be a kind of strain or a drain on your brand itself. Next up, if you're embarrassed to give people your web address or to hand out your business cards or just to tell people uh, to go and visit your site for more information. <laughs> I mean, this one happens a lot and it really is usually the biggest catalyst for making a change to your brand. So if you cringe at the idea of somebody looking at your website or it makes you feel a little bit sick when somebody asks you for your business card because you know you're going to get all these eyes on you or if you do actually feel that kind of need to announce a disclaimer come on we've all been there we've all done it before when you know that your website needs updating uh, so before you tell anyone your web address you're like oh it needs a bit of an update but you can go and have a look here so many of us have done that um when that happens then you know it's time for a rebrand or a refresh or really just to refocus on what your brand is internally and externally because if it's outdated or stagnant or boring or unoriginal if your business identity or online presence falls into any one of those kind of descriptions then it's definitely time to get yourself a rebrand next up if you're struggling to stand out from the competition and this works whether you are brand new in business or if you've been in this game for a really long time the struggle to stand out from the competition can pop up at any stage and with all the kind of internal and external work in your brand it really does come back to this one thing creating a competitive advantage you're really designing your difference in a way that makes you stand out so if you feel like your brand is lost in that sea of sameness then rebranding to really take advantage of your unique value will make your brand vastly more visible to consumers really searching for what it is that you've got next up did your brand get a little bit confused along the way <laughs> and then this again happens so often because by nature we're kind of fast-paced um if you're in the online world, especially if you're an online business owner or entrepreneur in that sense, uh, then we are really quick with our ideas and wanted to get them implemented. So your brand can fall lost to this confusion along the way as you are really trying to get your stuff out there quickly or keeping up with any trend that's going on, <laughs> on right now. But if your message and your design is a bit hit and miss um if your kind of business has really become a bit of a collection of offerings with no real unifying brand story behind it if your messaging is making your audience more confused than compelled to work with you then it's time to take a step back to really simplify and refocus your brand maybe your business plans have changed that's another sign and that's great. It really is great. You are not the same business um, when you first started. Uh, your model, your strategy may have changed along the way. And perhaps your brand really just kind of got dragged along for the ride. So when your business plans change, and that could happen in day three of your business, it could happen uh, three months from the day you started, it could happen three years, 30 years, there's no time frame of when your business plans might change. You don't know when they will change. You can't really plan for those unexpected moments of clarity that you have whilst you're building your business. But when your business plans change, so must your brand. And that's why it's so important to understand some of the processes and the thoughts and um, the design thinking side of what goes into creating your brand. And that's why I'm sharing these classes with you because it's so important to understand the process for yourself if you are the business owner so that you can identify when your business plans are changing and your brand is not keeping up with it so that rather than letting that distance between your business and your brand grow further and further apart until you really do have to kind of get somebody in to really clear through all the mess uh, I want you to be able to use these principles I'm sharing to really put into practice and grow your brand as your business plans change and grow Okay, next up, are you struggling to raise your prices? So this is, always feels a little bit of a sneaky kind of stealthy ninja association to using your brand and design. Because if the market price for your products or services seems kind of 
hopelessly fixed or despite the rising of kind of costs and materials there might be nothing that you can really do about changing the price of your business then your brand can change that for you because brands ultimately boil down to your customer's perception so the value of your offerings is really defined in the minds of those that you serve and by rebranding you're able to really shape the way that your customers perceive you and then you can raise your prices or ask the price that you feel you deserve or is according to your services and that all comes through going through the branding process you're able to really help shift the value of the services that you're providing even if you feel like you're in a stagnant market area where everyone thinks that something should cost a particular price you can completely shake that up and change it and charge what you believe the price should be when you pay attention to these branding steps that I'm taking you guys through and when you really start to apply them and when you create that tribe of your perfect customers that are just so excited to hear from you and work from you that they you know believe in your value and will pay you accordingly so it does sometimes sound like a bit of a kind of ninja trick to their branding and that's because we tend to have this fear or this kind of stigma around pricing like you're trying to rip somebody off if you're charging too much money (laughs) and I want to shake that away as much as possible when we're talking about creating your brand to help you raise your prices because it's not about using some sort of kind of tricks to make people pay you more than you're worth it's about using design psychology to really help people see and feel the real value of who you are and what you do and your brand can do that for you okay let's move on the next one the next sign that you need to rebrand is going to be when you are trying to attract a new audience so maybe you've realized that there's a new market that perhaps you could be serving better or maybe you realize that you don't actually like your uh, current audience and that's okay that happens and it's allowed and a rebrand can really help you redefine yourself with the goal of reaching that new audience so those were the kind of big signs the big glaring signs that you need a rebrand so if your name your brand name no longer reflects your brand vision or if you're embarrassed to give out your details or you're struggling to stand out, or your brand's just got confused along the way, your business plan has changed, or you're struggling to raise your prices, or you're really trying to attract a different audience. Those are the real key signs that you need to focus on your brand and go through a rebranding or repositioning or a adaption of your brand because rebranding can come in any shape or size depending on what you need for your business. And whether those signs are kind of plain as day and you can really see and identify with them now or perhaps they're kind of hiding in plain sight. It's time to rebrand when you start to get that kind of inkling that you think you need to. So often the first sign that you need a rebrand is if you're wondering if a rebrand is right for you. (laughs) Because there will never be a right time to take on a project like a rebrand so how often is it that your business things that you need to do for your business goes to the bottom of your list of things to do because everybody else's needs come first and have you ever heard that saying about the cobbler's children's shoes well I absolutely hate that saying Um, because it's far too true in so many places but it really just shouldn't be because there's always excuses and there's always the you know excuse as well as that perhaps you've been getting on okay or you've been getting by or you've been doing all right without having to focus on this so far or you've got no time or no budget or it's too overwhelming or you just wouldn't know where to start Um, or perhaps you've had a really bad experience working with a designer or a brand strategist before believe me I've heard it all and I do get it I really do but what if it could be easy so do you think 
that your business could really get better on the other side of a truly great rebrand that successfully represents who you are and what you do with that level of excellence that you do it and your service or your product delivers for people. And what if that very first step starts with a teardown? One that you can do in the privacy of your own home so no one needs to know uh, what you're about to uncover Um, and one where you will walk away with clarity on what is currently working and where there's room for improvement in your brand as well as some real kind of action steps of exactly what needs to be done um, on your brand so it becomes that kind of authority infusing sales converting machine because you know it can be and that sounds pretty good right so let's dive into the second part of tonight's programming if that's what we should be calling this <laughs> we're gonna look at where to start with your brand teardown so we all now know that a teardown is the process of completely dismantling something and when that thing is your brand you've got to start with some brutal truths and maybe possibly a stiff drink I mean it's half past seven on a Monday almost half past seven on a Monday um and after the day I've had with the kids at home today that's a whole other story I feel like perhaps I deserve a stiff drink as well so maybe I'll have one in solidarity for going through these questions with you tonight but maybe you've uh, never really thought about the impact that your brand could have on your business so maybe you've heard so much talk about all the important things like sales and marketing and writing really great copy that you forgot that all of those things are linked to a bigger picture, your brand. And that's okay because you are absolutely not alone. You are in a camp with a lot of very smart people who don't really associate the power of their brand with connecting to the right people and converting your business into this blissful kind of sales machine and that's okay (laughs) as I said you are not alone there are a lot of people that think this way but it is time to really stand above all of those and take action on the thing that will help everything fall into place in your business and that is your brand so let's tear down your brand together now where to start in your teardown is going to be asking these brutal questions and be ready to really answer them with absolute brutal honesty. It's the first thing I do with all my brand clients and any students before we really get started with the rebranding process is to tear down and that means getting really clear on your vision and then being brutally honest on where your brand sits right now compared to that vision. And that's why we get started with the uh, brand clarity session, because getting some really serious kind of clarity on your business is the absolute first stage to any brand project. Um, And then there are three core areas that I like to focus on in your brand, uh, the three V's of branding, as I like to call it, which is your vision, your voice, and your visuals. But they all have to be working together to get the real result that you want but it's the vision part that really starts the process. It's your vision for your business that dictates how your visuals will look and where your brand voice comes from. And that's why we really dive into the brand clarity and this teardown section at the very start of any brand project. So let's get digging into what these questions are that you're going to have to get brutally honest with. And feel free to kind of write them down but um, let me know if you would like a copy of these um, and I will pop that together after this class and I'll share it in the group with you. I haven't got them prepared yet, but I can grab them from this presentation and pop them into a nice uh, PDF document for you. And I'll share that over in the group afterwards if it would be helpful to have a copy of these questions. So just let me know, drop a comment below and I'll make sure that I tag you when those uh, questions and PDF worksheet is ready in the group. So the first question, what do you want to be known for? And then 
How is your brand positioning you for this right now? And be honest. Now, there's a reason why the second part of these questions are highlighted. Because while the first part of the question might seem a little bit familiar, you know, that is the uh, main question that I will have had on absolute repeat (laughs) throughout this week together. What do you want to be known for? But the real brutal honesty part is how is your brand positioning you for this right now? That's where you need to get into the messy truth of it all. Next up, who do you want to attract? And then how well is your brand attracting these people right now? Be honest, take a brutal cold hard look (laughs) at what your brand is doing right now and whether you are attracting the right kind of people, the people that you want to attract going forward and be honest. Then what problem do you solve for them? What problem do you solve for the people that you want to attract? I'm just going to pause a minute because I think my (laughs) slides haven't quite caught up. Oh, there we go. They've caught up now. Okay, so what problem do you solve for these people that you want to attract? And then, how well is your brand communicating this right now? And be honest. I mean, first up, do you even know what problem you are actually solving for these perfect people that you want to attract? And if you don't know what problem you're actually solving, uh, then you're definitely not going to be communicating this um, very well right now. But if you do know what problem you're solving, then take a real cold look at how well your brand is communicating this. Now, it might be an idea to have somebody help you through this process, somebody that knows you or your business quite well and that can give you some honest feedback here. But whenever you work with anyone and ask anyone questions about your brand, please always bear in mind uh, that their opinion is just their opinion. And unless they have a real kind of depth of knowledge either about your business or about the branding process then just be cautious what advice you take from people because everyone will give you very obviously well-intentioned and well-meaning advice but it's a bit like when people share um a logo design inspiration that they want feedback on on facebook makes me my eyes roll slightly because (laughs) you're gonna be getting feedback from a lot of people and most of those people are not going to be your perfect customers and there is absolutely no point you taking advice from anyone who isn't your perfect customer or isn't really well versed or well trained in brand strategy and design so that's my little disclosure on when you ask for help please do ask for help but ask the right people for help and so make use of me whilst we're here together this week um but that's not to scare you off from asking anybody else for help just be cautious with who you listen to when you are asking people for their opinion on your brand Next question, who are your competitors and what makes you different from them? And then the more important question, how well is your brand communicating this right now? And be honest with yourself. Remember, we want the brutal truth here. We want brutal honesty. (laughs) And next up, um, that should be what, not who. (laughs) What core values? Is your brand communicating? And then are they the ones that you want to be known for? And be honest, again, be honest with yourself here. You need to get the brutal truth um, and get all of that laid bare to start with so that you have that foundation to grow on in your business and your brand. As you start to develop your brand, you need to have these questions laid out in truth. Next up, what is your brand purpose? And then are you communicating this everywhere in absolutely everything that you do are you communicating your brand's purpose so first up honestly do you really know what your brand purpose is and if you do how well are you communicating this everywhere does it show up in the way that you present yourself online does it show up in your website does it show up in the conversations that you have every day with people in your business is it showing up everywhere Um, When I make, I've noticed that everyone's saying yes please to the handout kind of notes on this. Um, I'll make a little special kind of checkbox alongside these so that you can really give yourself a kind of rundown and tick uh, for 
where and how you are communicating everywhere. But remember the uh, brand touchpoint uh, PDF that's already available in the group for you to download. It's a great starting place for looking at really how many different places your brand shows up and where your customers will be experiencing your brand. So make sure you grab a copy of that PDF because it is a useful resource to come back to, not to overwhelm you or make you feel like you have to turn up in all those places, but just to give you a reference point and a check-in point uh, so that you can see all of the various different places that you brand might be showing up and so that you can check with this question in mind specifically that you are showing up and communicating your brand purpose in all of those places. Next up, what is your brand currently lacking? So this is the biggest truth testing teardown question. What is your brand currently lacking in? And then what steps can you take to change this right now? And again, be honest. And if you're not sure, then please do reach out. Let me know if you need some extra support this week. More than happy to kind of do a little mini uh, teardown session with you guys within the Facebook group. Um, I'm here to support you guys as much as I can this week. So please do use me as much as you can. Okay. As we said, the real key to these brutal teardown questions is the second half of each of those questions. So the top level of those questions, you may feel that you've already visited before, you know, but where the real teardown part of the process comes in is in the brutal honesty of that second half of the question. And that can be tough. And you may need to do this with a partner. Uh, You will definitely want someone to help you hold up the mirror and really dig into those uncomfortable truths because... Most of us are hiding behind them. So having somebody that can hold up the mirror for you when you're going through a teardown uh, can be a really valuable experience. Because only when you have really allowed yourself this brutal honesty in answering those questions, then you can move into creating that brand that your business deserves. And whether you do that on your own or if you hire a brand strategist to work with or you work perhaps with a business coach to help you uncover those truth it doesn't matter all that matters is that you get to the real truth before you start rebuilding or you start building your brand and then of course don't forget to actually build your brand (laughs) so don't do uh, the hard work here all that internal kind of shift work um, and then stop before it becomes the part where you actually create the external version of your brand that your audience is going to connect with. Because that, I'm going to flag that right now as a key moment to pay attention to because that is where a lot of self-sabotage can creep in during the brand process. So be aware of that one. And don't forget that you are doing all this work to launch your brand. So keep in mind those brand launch styles uh, that we went into in the last class. And then while you're working on your brand, you can be planning that brand launch so that while your brand is in development and design, you are prepped and ready to actually get your brand out there. And then always remember, brand style follows business substance or follows brand substance. Um, It's that old saying, kind of style over substance. I want you to keep this in mind at all times when it comes to your brand. Because if at any point you catch yourself thinking, like, oh, I really like the look of, you know, how so-and-so over there or what her face has got her brand. She's branding that thing over there really great and I want mine to be like that. Stop. <laughs> if you ever catch yourself thinking that, then stop and think about what you want to be known for. Because I'm pretty sure it's not looking like someone else over there. So when you're not clear on the substance, on the character, the essence of your business, then you're going to end up creating a brand that's confused, that's inconsistent, and that is pretty unpredictable in its presentation. And you'll risk really designing a brand that isn't connected to your offerings. And so whether you want to bring on a brand strategist to help you find those kind of uncomfortable truths or you're just going to be happy going it alone or if you want to work on it together this week, uh, then what's important is that you do it. 
That's the important thing here. And when you do, whether you then decide to hand over your work to a designer or uh, you want them to work their magic on designs for you or you practice your own design skills and go DIY, uh, your brand will have been created with your kind of core meaning, your uncomfortable truths, then brought to life in the most confident and connective way in your brand. When you do this work first, you know you're going to be creating a brand that has a deeper connection and meaning and story behind it. And it will help you bridge that gap between what you want to be known for and what your tribe, your audience, those perfect customers want to experience. So that is the start of your teardown. That's the starting point for really dissecting your brand. It's asking those truth-telling questions and holding up a mirror while you look at where you want your brand to be compared to where it is right now. And that sets the base, your canvas, whatever you want to call it, (laughs) it's the starting point for your solid brand clarity. And before we jump into what this looks like in practice, I just want to take you through the stages of your brand. So it's very important to know the kind of process and the stages of your brand so that when you're going through the brand process yourself or when you're working with someone on your brand, you know and you can identify what stages you should be going through and the kind of questions and thought process that should be going along with it. So these are the stages of your brand. It starts with research. I mean, any successful brand, any successful brand design is going to start with some intensive detailed research because brand research is going to give you that awareness of where your brand is currently and a real understanding of how it is perceived by your customers and where it fits in that competitive landscape and next up is strategy so a strong brand will make growing your business much easier but what type of business do you actually want to grow and this is where brand strategy comes in because this is the system for really defining the psychological makeup of your brand and for positioning it for growth and success this is where we're looking at things like your core messaging and your brand personality and that competitive advantage um, your brand promise all these things are the foundational elements that will be revealed during the strategy phase and that then help you move into the design phase and so the design stage really begins uh, with the introduction of what your new brand will look like to the world and this is where we're going to look at what you want to be known for and what your audience wants to experience from you but how this comes together in a physical form through your visual identity and through your branded offers through the services the products the absolutely everything that you offer (laughs) I mean this is where all of that strategy work really starts to meet design psychology and you start to design that powerful visual brand that connects all of the internal work that you've done to the external work the the world your customers, your tribe, your audience, whoever you want to call them, will see. Even your old school friends and your parents will see as well. (laughs) And they're going to be the hardest critics if you can get them to understand um, everything you're winning. Anyway, (laughs) the next stage. So kind of stage four in the brand process is the launch process. And typically that's where you would think it would end because you have now designed your brand and you have launched your brand. Um, but it's not the final part. So the launch phase is really achieved both internally and externally. It's the ongoing kind of process of ensuring that your customers on the kind of external side and your employees or your team on the internal side really understand all of the work that we've done before. So your brand purpose and the ways in which uh, you show up consistently with that purpose and share that purpose and that message with the world but it is not over at the launch stage so after you launch your brand it's really time to then deliver and this is the part where you turn up confidently and consistently in your brand 
absolutely everywhere. So let's look at what all of this looks like in practice. So your customers are already judging you based on your brand design. Even if you don't think you've got a brand design, even if you have been working on your brand design forever, or you haven't even thought about working on your brand design, your customers are already judging you based on what they perceive to be your brand, even if that's not what you think it should be. And if you don't believe me, (laughs) then I want to show you this slide. So looking at these three options, which one of these bags of coffee is from an artisan roaster? Is it A, is it B, or is it C? Let me know what you think in the comments. So which one of these would you say is an artisan roaster? And then which one of these coffees is the cheapest? Again, A, B, or C, which one do you think is the cheapest? And then finally, which one of these coffees is going to have the strongest taste? And again, A, B, or C. Which one of these do you think, just by looking at those bags of coffee, is going to have the strongest taste? I can see a couple of answers coming in through. So answer for the first question, B, and then coffee is the cheapest, C, and then I'm going to wait for your next answer. But yes, (laughs) was it easy to choose? So did you find yourself really instantly judging these brands pretty easily? And if you did chose B for the artisan roaster, then you'll be right. You're absolutely right. Of course, that's the artisan roaster one. I mean, it absolutely feels like the most likely to be artisan. I'm seeing your rest of the comments come through. So A is the cheapest. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. A is the cheapest. And C is the strongest. (laughs) And B is artisan. Perfect. You got top marks. Except none of these coffees exist. I've created all of these mock-ups for tonight's class just to kind of uh, give you a kind of insight into how design psychology works. So you might have missed this at first glance, but when you take a little closer look, the difference between these products isn't the usual things that you would obsess about because the copy, the logo mark, the brand name, the product names, they're all the same. Woodstone's coffee. Uh, That's just my... (laughs) <laughs> my name I've made up, my brand name that I've made up for this this evening um, because my maiden name was Stone and my married name is uh, Woodward. So there we go. <laughs> That's uh, my take on uh, how you can use visual cues and design to really connect with people's already kind of preconceived connections with what should look like what. And you're saying, wow, yes. Oh, Liz, your branding uh, guesses are off. <laughs> Learning through that. But that's okay. And it's not that it's off. So I'll jump back into this in a minute, but I got distracted by looking at the comments because I do find this game really fun. Um, because most people will say, um, you know, that the artisan especially is definitely going to be B. The strong, What's strong and what's cheapest is going to be, you know, different depending on different people. And that's a really important point. I think hopefully I've raised that in one of the previous classes. So understanding who your audience is and who those perfect customers are, that's a real key part to the design choices that you make. Because if you wanted to give across the meaning of artisan to a customer that when they looked at these pictures thought that A or C meant artisan, then you'll need to adapt your design style and your brand style uh, to fit your customer's worldview. So it's an important thing to think about. So there isn't typically a right or wrong answer, but most people will perceive them in a particular way. But understanding who your audience is, is really key to figuring out what design cues you should use in your brand to communicate the feeling and the message that you want to put across there. So there's no right or wrong really, but hopefully this has helped um, you see that point. Because the difference here is in the design and in the colors and in the imagery and the fonts and the layout. The only difference between all of these products is the visual look and feel of the product. All of the copy is the same. And yet within seconds, most of us were just making judgments about what these products stand for and what their values are and whether they're artisan or cheap or even what they might taste like. We decided which <laughs> what the kind of strength of the coffee would be just by looking at the bags. 
And so all of those visual clues are used in the design and you should use those in your brand. And from those elements, kind of collectively known as your brand identity, people will make decisions about who you are and whether they want to choose to work with you. And it's easy to see how research really confirms that we make judgments in a blink of an eye. And your customers are making judgments about your values, your business, your worth, based on a real quick glance at your brand design. Mostly as they scroll on past in your newsfeed, um, whether you're paying attention to what your brand looks like or not, your customers, your audience, your prospective customers are paying attention. And so by taking the power of design to really shape people's beliefs and behavior seriously, and you take that into serious consideration within your, within your business, you will drive more conversions and more sales. And here is a real life example. So in front of you now is uh, Chase Life. So this is the Chase Life brand before I started working on it with them. So from this quick look, what kind of judgments would you make about this business? I mean, share them with me in the comments uh, now if you want to, or just let them kind of percolate in your mind based on what you were looking at right now in front of you. Now, Rachel and David, who run Chase Life, um, they have a great business and they had a great business before they came to me with years of experience in the industry and a really large following and an excellent reputation as the experts in their space. Um, and they have that deep expertise and they have great products and they do have name recognition, but they knew there was something missing. They were lacking a consistent visual brand that showed them as they wanted to be known. Ooh, Catherine, I love that. Ooh, okay. That's exciting. Fly by night, multi-level marketing. Yes. And that's exactly right. They are not communicating. They were not communicating in their visual brand. The absolute breadth and wealth of their knowledge and their experience. So after I started asking them all of those probing questions that we've been to, through in the last few uh, classes and really started to get to know their business and their brand strategy, we knew instantly where we needed to kind of focus our work because their audience is actually busy, health conscious professionals who are actually not afraid to kind of invest in themselves so they were actually their target market was quite an affluent market but their inconsistent visual representation does absolutely nothing to convey this so I'm just catching your uh comments it's hard to see but I can't tell what consulting they do I wouldn't read any further stiff old look exactly none of those things are the message that they wanted to be conveying in their brand and so the result was really quite hit and miss in their brand that sometimes they attracted the right people but just as often as not meaning at least 50 percent of their efforts that the, they were making to really market their brand was wasted on the wrong people which is a great place to improve from so once we understood the values that they wanted to communicate within their brand, we could make some major changes to really better align their visual brand and their voice and their visuals with the audience that they wanted to attract. So first up, we started with the voice. And while I'm not a copywriter, I do know how to help my clients kind of find their own voice and to really bring this into their brand. So we started here with this chase life kind of motto it was very much uh, based on the train spotting um introduction that's the kind of feeling and vibe obviously not from what the topic of train spotting is but that kind of gutsy statement is the type of statement we wanted to make at the front end of their brand so we adapted that kind of style into this motto for chase life and you can see a little preview of the logo at the wait date that we've done below there for them so Chase Life really already had a strong name. Chase Life was their existing brand name. And that really reflected kind of Rachel and David to a T. But it lacked that strong brand voice, one that could really be used throughout their visual brand without Rachel and David needing it to actually show up and speak it for themselves. So the more we kind of uncovered their values and mission, the more this, this tone of voice in front of us kind of emerged. 
And so this was the first piece that we created to really showcase the voice for Chase Life. And then that went on to really help us define the rest of the visual brand. And I'll get to that in a minute. But as you can see, so Chase and an assertive confidence, Chase sexy, Chase happy, Chase an outstanding performance over settling for average. There's a lot of strong emotive language in there. And it's easier to start with the verbal side of your brand than the visual sometimes because we are more used to kind of using language in a verbal way than we are visual. So that's why I like to start with my clients because let's, you know, make things easy to start with. Let's get the verbal side of your brand now. Let's get the visual side coming up next to really enhance your vision and the verbal language. So this is a picture of the brand motto and it absolutely kind of instantly became the poster for their brand style with their message and the tone and the style. As I said, verbally, viscerally and visually, everything started to fall into place from here. So from there, we created that logo mark um, and updated their tagline to have play beyond the rules to give a little bit more of an insight into what their business was about. Um, and you can probably see, maybe if I highlight it out to you, I'm not sure if my little pointing thing's gonna work on here, but the A in Chase, it's got this little directional piece, it's got a little arrow in there. And that's just a little subtlety that we brought into their brand because that was part of what their brand was about. It was to attract that audience of affluent buyers, people that are ready to invest at a high level within themselves. This is for fitness and mindset. So there's a lot of mindset work that goes into their coaching style and process. It's not about just kind of doing personal training and things like that. It's a lot deeper work than that. And so we needed to get that feeling to come across in their brand style. And so in line then with kind of color psychology principles, we added a dark blue, like black color to showcase their authority and their expertise because, you know, blues color subconsciously is associated with trust and black is authority then we use their core color gold to really create that feeling of luxury and success and confidence which are some of the feelings that their perfect customers really desire most and then contrasted this with a bold red which is the color for energy and action and leadership and those are all the qualities their brand and their audience really high hold in high regard so from here, we developed the logo mark, taking these values and creating an icon shape that reflected the same message. So you can see it there with the arrow in there, kind of keep it moving forward, that type of m momentum feeling that we wanted to create. And then we used the, you know, the same kind of fonts that shared that bold kind of bullshit free take on life. And so after kind of translating this across their social platforms, so they could launch their brand and take real ownership of their visual identity, this is what... Rachel had to say about the process so I'll just leave that yeah but you know part of my favorite part is this that says you know fuck yes that's my brand that's where I like helping people create fuck yes brands <laughs> and that was almost my kind of favorite part of the brand process but what I love most about helping people get such clarity and vision in their brands is what comes next so after you design and launch your brand whether we were working together or not it's seeing the brand kind of grow and gain strength out in the real world. And this is what David and Rachel have gone on to do after we finished working together. So they continued um, after their brand launch to create and continue the process of their visual identity on their own using the brand work that we did together in our private sessions and the templates that I helped them set up for their brand because I'm such an advocate of being able to hand over and give control of your brand back to you as the business owner and I just love then seeing this is now what their social media platform looks like rather than um I don't know can I switch back to so many slides away rather than it looking like this which just, oh, it doesn't feel absolutely right at all. Now, it looks like this. So much better. You can see now and get a feel for what type of client that they're trying to attract and what their business, their coaching business is about. 
So after we finished working together on their brand, then Chase Life really continued to grow their brand. And as I said, using the design templates that we created for them, they've been able to really confidently uh, develop their own visual brand presence without needing to hire a designer, which is definitely my most favorite part of any brand project, seeing it go on and live on without the need for a designer or a brand strategist to keep it going. So that's the power of design. It's not just a nice to have extra. It really is a key marketing tool to really help you attract the right customers for your product and to convince them to buy. And if you're not investing in design, then you're absolutely, well, almost certainly, <laughs> leaving sales on the table right now. Rebranding allows you to finally do away with any confusion that your current brand may have grown into like the example we've shown there in Chase Life. And that could be through no fault of its own or your own, because when you grow without a clear brand strategy, it's really easy to slip into brand confusion. So developing your foundational pillars like purpose and mission and visuals, uh, vision and values will really help you create that distinct competitive advantage. And then by expressively like defining those unique benefits that you offer to your customers, you're able to really create a much more compelling argument as to why they should choose you over any competition. So what a rebrand really gives you and your company is confidence. And that's whether you're rebranding or just starting from scratch with your brand. But from the kind of leadership roles to the employees of you, to your customers as well, it really gives that feeling of confidence. And few things are as important as confidence when it comes to branding. So a cohesive and compelling brand will inspire confidence inside your business that really flows through to the kind of confidence that in, inspires in your customers to get them wanting to associate themselves with your brand. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> there will never be a right time to take on a project like a rebrand. Um, and hopefully they've given you some really food, real food for thought and some practical applications that you can take away and get cracking on this yourself. Because all too often your brand goes to the bottom of your list because everybody else's needs come first. And remember that saying about the cobbler's shoes, the cobbler's children's shoes. Just don't let that be your excuse. I hate that saying. I'm here to obliterate that saying. <laughs> so whether you've kind of been getting on okay so far or you know that something needs to drastically change because if you want to get to where you want to be known for, you've got to make some big changes. Just don't let time or budget or feeling overwhelmed or not knowing where to start or having had a bad experience stop you. Hopefully this series has shown you that it could be easy. Because what if it could be easy? Do you think your business could be better on the other side of a truly great rebrand? One that absolutely represents who you are. That tells people undoubtedly what you do. With that level of excellence that you do it. What if that first step was just as easy as taking that first step? Together, using the information that we've shared in this series. And I'm here all week to help you guys with that. So please do come to me if you need any extra support. Because a strong brand enables you to compete where logic cannot win. Now, when I first wrote this quote down, it just kind of, when I popped this onto the slide when I was talking about this, it made absolute sense. And then when I shared it in the Facebook group earlier, I suddenly thought, I'm not sure if that makes so much sense. But what I'm saying here is that when you have a brand that really connects with your audience, whether or not you have a tangible advantage over your competitors or not, becomes irrelevant. So think about it. Is Starbucks really the world's best coffee? It, it's not. Not by a long shot. And I love Starbucks coffee. But actually, um, since I've now been forced to make more of my own coffee at home, it's not the best coffee out there on the market. And but will millions or do millions of people still go out there to pay a considerable amount of more money for a cup of coffee at Starbucks than they would anywhere else? I mean, absolutely. 
when we're, you know, open again and I like to go to Starbucks. Um, but hopefully you get the point. When people spend money at Starbucks, what are they really paying that much more for? And the answer is simple. It's the brand. And that brings us to the end of this series, which is perfect timing because I really do need a bit of a swig of water. So bear with me a moment. (laughs) So that went on a little bit longer than I thought for this evening, but we're nearly coming up to an hour. Um, I'm going to be over, as I said, in the group all week. So if you have any questions, do let me know. I'm here to help. So please don't be shy. And of course, the replays will be up all week for you to grab and you can catch up on those as and when you need. And if you loved tonight's class, if you've loved all the classes in this series and you'd like to keep the momentum going with your brand teardown and the rebuild um, to build on that clarity that you have and to start to see this come to life in your visual brand identity. And if you would like to do it with me on your team, helping you implement the right strategies for your brand, then this is the part where I invite you to continue working with me. And I mean it when I say I'd love to invite you to keep working with me. And while I'm always open for one-to-one brand projects, so if you'd like that option, then let me know. But my brand transformation program, Brand and Launch, which only opens a couple of times a year, is going to be opening officially tomorrow. And I wanted to let you know about it first. Brand and Launch, the easiest way to transform your brand and build your tribe of perfect customers. So this is my exclusive eight-week brand transformation program and it's designed for action-taking entrepreneurs and it really is a rare combination of strategy sessions a bit like we've worked through this last week and then group mastermind meetings and hot seat feedback and hands-on design support cut my teeth as a designer so I can help you with all of the ins and outs of design as well as the strategy side of things and it's also got expert training from myself and a selection of my online leader friends now we work through all those stages of the brand uh, development process together. We're going to be designing your strategy. We're going to be looking at your brand, your offers, your visual identity together. Now, as I said, it officially opens tomorrow, but I wanted to let you know tonight because I do have a special something for anyone who knows that they would like to work with me on their brand. If they want me on their team, working through your business and your brand strategy together, helping you design your offers and your visual identity all while planning for that all important brand launch. If that's you and you're already thinking, D, I need this, then (laughs) if you're ready to go for it now, um, then for you, my action taking friend, you'll not only get the full brand and launch program and all the bonuses, but I want to extend um, an option for you guys to join me for a private brand tear down and rebuild session with me. So that's two extra sessions, just me and you working on your brand together, going through everything that we've talked tonight to really help set you up for creating your new brand. So that's brand and launch plus the teardown and rebuild sessions. And that bonus is not going to be available on the outside of this call from this evening. So it's only open to those of you who are on the call tonight or have are watching the replay before 11 o'clock tonight. So if you would like my eyes on your brand as you tear it down and rebuild it, then you're going to want to grab that tonight. It's going to be me and you, two private sessions to work on your brand together. And it's easily worth the price of the program on its own. It's actually worth more than double the price of the program because I've got an extra special kind of offer this week that I've never run before. And I probably won't ever run it again because what I haven't mentioned yet is that to celebrate the big 1-0 in my business this month, yes, 10 years almost to the day when I set up this little business of mine, I'm going to be practicing one of the offers I mentioned in the very first class, buy one, give one. And I'm quite excited about this. So I hope you're excited about this as well. So every person that registers for brand and launch this time round, is going to get a second login to share with a friend. So it's kind of my business birthday gift to you that you can then gift to anyone you know who might need some brand support right now. Or perhaps, you know, you've got a business partner that you'd like to work through this with, or if you want to, then you absolutely have my full permission to find a buddy 
maybe there's one here tonight that wants to buddy up with you and you can share the cost of your place with them so you can do absolutely really as you wish with that second login uh, just let me know who you'd like to gift the space to when you register and I'll add you both to the program at no extra cost because I just thought it would be a fun way to celebrate my 10th business anniversary this month and with all of the things that we've all been going through in business and life these past few months it really just felt like a a good thing to do and doing what feels good for you is absolutely one of my top priorities in my business, in my brand, in life. And now more than ever, your brand matters. How you show up matters. And there's nothing I love more than holding up the mirror to help you see what you can achieve with your brand and supporting you through it. And with this buy one, give one option, hopefully I'll get to do this for more of you. And that will be the absolute best birthday present to myself. Uh, so if that sounds like something that you could use right now then I would love to continue supporting you in your brand journey so join me for brand and launch and grab those private brand teardown and rebuild sessions as your first movers thank you when you join tonight all of the details for this are over on brandandlaunch.co.uk page and I will pop a official email out tomorrow with all of the details. So I'm not going to go into any long kind of sales pitch here for it. But I just wanted to let you guys know about it tonight. Uh, because if you wait for the official email tomorrow, then you're going to miss out on that private brand teardown and rebuild session with me. So if you know that you need to focus on building your brand right now, then run to that link and get cracking tonight. Um, if you do think that you might need this, but you've got questions, then do feel free to drop them in the chat now or I'll be on email or over in the Facebook Messenger all evening. So you can ask me any questions you need in private there. And the offer, as I said, for that private brand teardown and rebuild session uh, with me, which is two extra sessions, uh, is going to disappear tonight. Um, so it is just for those kind of fast movers and a little thank you treat for everyone that showed up here. If you would like to continue working with me, of course, no obligation to. I'm here all week to help support you still. And you'll have access to these recordings the replays all week so that you can go through them in your own time okay i was gonna have a little look for any questions uh thank you it was great it makes perfect sense thank you rachel thank you julie liz lovely presentation style and voice ah thank you so much i really appreciate you guys all being here live as well so much better to do these things live with people and actually know that there's somebody there paying attention um <laughs> when the tech wasn't working at the beginning uh, the last class I was like oh no but it's okay uh, so if there are no questions I'll give a moment or two for the comments and reactions to kind of keep up loving seeing your reactions by the way pop up when uh, I shared the quote from uh, Jay's life it is one of my favorite co uh, quotes I've actually just toyed with the idea of just calling my brand process the fuck yes brand process um, but obviously that would be really difficult to promote online especially on Facebook I don't think I'd get that past any Facebook ads so another thing to consider <laughs> when you're naming your business and your brand and your products uh, but anyway if there are no more questions I will sign off for the final time in this series so thank you all for being here with me this evening and with me all week last week hopefully I'll get to keep working with some of you on your brand over in the brand and launch program but either way I will be in the group all week this week to answer any questions that you have about your brand. So please do pop them in there. There's a threads for each class. But if you've just got a general question, pop it in the group and I'm more than happy to support you any way I can this week. And so have a lovely rest of your evening or day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you again over in the Facebook group. Bye. <laughs>